Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna look at some fitness or nutrition myth, look at where that myth got started, and then why it's actually wrong based on the most recent scientific evidence. So this week we're gonna be looking at the idea that fasted cardio is better for fat loss than doing fed cardio. In other words, doing cardio first thing in the morning on an empty stomach is better than doing cardio after having eaten a meal. So first, where did this myth come from? Uh, well, the basic theory has two prongs. Um, so the first prong states that since first thing in the morning, insulin levels are low and insulin is responsible for suppressing lipolysis, doing cardio when insulin is low should result in a sort of release of this inhibition on lipolysis and allow more fat to be broken down during the cardio session. The second prong states that since first thing in the morning, glycogen levels are low uh, or stored carbohydrate levels are low, uh, the body should be more likely to turn to stored fat as a fuel source during the cardio session. And as it turns out, both of these ideas have been supported by several lines of evidence. Back in 1976, Alborg and Felig showed that when you consume carbohydrate during a cardio session, your body starts using much more carbohydrate for fuel and much less fat for fuel. This early study was an interesting one. They had all subjects perform light cardio for four hours, but one group consumed 200 grams of glucose 90 minutes in. And as you can see here in the graph, after that consumption of glucose, the body drastically increased its use of glucose as fuel compared to the controls, which actually utilized more and more fat as the session went on. So this led a lot of people to believe that if you wanna burn as much fat as possible during a cardio session, you should avoid eating carbs before and during the session. And for the next 20 years or so, this remained the prevailing dogma, with one study published 20 years later in 1997, finding that small elevations in plasma insulin before exercise suppressed lipolysis and appeared to limit fat oxidation. So this far, it seems to really be the case that if you want to burn as much fat as possible during your cardio session, you should perform it fasted. So where did this idea go wrong? Well, the main takedown against fasted cardio is that just because you burn more fat during the cardio session itself, which is true, doesn't necessarily imply that you will lose more fat overall like over a 24 hour period, for example. And this was first brought to light in 2011 when Paoli and colleagues discovered that if you burn more of one substrate, whether carbs or fats, during a cardio session, you'll burn less of that substrate over the course of the next 24 hours. More precisely, what their study actually measured was respiratory exchange ratio, or RER, which can be used as a measure of substrate utilization. Basically, when you do out the math, burning one molecule of carbohydrate results in a higher RER than burning one molecule of fat. So in this study, what they found was that right before the cardio session, the fed group had a higher RER, implying they were burning less fat before and during the session. However, 12 hours after the session, the RER numbers completely flipped. 12 and 24 hours post-exercise, the fasted cardio group was now burning significantly less fat. These new findings led the authors of the study to conclude that over long periods, exercising after breakfast would be more effective than training fasted to lose weight through the increased metabolism and reduced RER in the hours after the training session. However, while helpful for generating hypotheses, the studies we've looked at so far have been acute studies looking at short-term changes in substrate utilization, not long-term trials investigating full-scale changes in body fat. So for that, we need to turn to the first study of this kind, published in 2014 by Schoenfeld and colleagues. They took 20 young women and split them into a fasted cardio and a fed cardio group. They were following a diet that put them in a 500 calorie deficit with the same macronutrients between the groups and did one hour of moderate intensity cardio three days per week, either fasted or fed, depending on their group. After four weeks, both groups lost a significant amount of fat, but they found no difference in fat loss between the groups, implying that both fasted and fed cardio are equally effective, which led the authors to claim that they refuted the veracity of the hypothesis that fasted exercise reduces body fat to a greater extent. The obvious limitations here are that the sample size was pretty small with only 10 women in each group, and the fact that the study was only run for four weeks, um, so a relatively short study duration. Um, so it could stand a reason that perhaps over more time, one of the groups would have started to outperform the other in terms of fat loss. Uh, but I wouldn't expect this to be the case, especially based on sort of the equivocal nature of the acute mechanistic data on this anyway. I'd also note that these women, although healthy, weren't all that lean, uh, with an average body fat percentage of 25%. So it could stand to reason that perhaps leaner athletes uh, or perhaps leaner men uh, would see different results. Um, however, again, uh, I wouldn't necessarily speculate this, given that 
in the field, people have been very successful in terms of getting very lean with both fasted and fed cardio. And like I said, there doesn't really seem to be any real strong mechanistic case for preferring one or the other. And so to sort of wrap this up, I'd like to turn to the results of a 2017 systematic review and meta-analysis looking at five independent four to six week trials, which found that fasted compared to fed exercise does not increase the amount of weight loss, and that weight loss and fat loss from exercise is more likely to be enhanced through creating a meaningful caloric deficit over a period of time rather than exercising in fasted or fed states. Furthermore, the review suggested that there is no detrimental effect on body mass and body composition with utilizing fasted cardio. However, they do acknowledge that the data is still somewhat limited, and we need to see more research in order to make really firm conclusions about this issue. So in terms of practical takeaway here, uh, there doesn't really seem to be any special benefit to doing cardio fasted, um, and the extent of fat loss seems to really be mostly dependent on the extent of the imposed caloric deficit. And secondly, in my personal experience, it seems that some people simply just prefer doing cardio fasted first thing in the morning, and that might energize them for the day. Um, or they may not have much of an appetite first thing in the morning, and so they find that doing that cardio first thing sort of starts to get their appetite going, um, and it would just be an inconvenience for them to have to eat a meal prior, and I think that that's perfectly fine. So guys, I wanted this video to focus mostly on using fasted cardio as a tool for enhancing fat loss. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff I could have gotten into here, including metabolic differences, uh, hormonal differences, and whether or not training fasted has any impact on increasing or decreasing lean mass, and that's something I I think I might get to in a follow-up video to this, uh, addressing some of these peripheral issues. I'll probably do another walk and talk follow-up video here. Um, so if there's anything you'd like to hear me cover on the topic of training fasted that wasn't covered in this video, uh, just leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get to the ones that people uh, seem to be wondering about the most and you can stay tuned for that video. But for this one, I'll just wrap it up here um, with the main conclusion that there doesn't seem to be any inherent benefit to training fasted. Uh, if you do prefer it, then you can do it, and that doesn't seem to really be detrimental in any way. But in terms of scheduling your cardio, I think that what is most important is just finding a time where it fits in your schedule best so that you can adhere to it most effectively over the long term. And also doing cardio when you feel more energized, whether that's from eating a meal before it or doing it fasted first thing in the morning. Okay guys, that's gonna wrap up this week's Myth Bust Monday. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up and I'll have some more Myth Bust Monday episodes up here next to my head somewhere if you'd like to check them out. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you guys all here next Monday.